All right, what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? How is it going? I am Is There No One Else? And we are going to do the 7.1.0 patch notes. Now, as is always the case with these, uh, the first patch notes are pretty long, pretty in-depth. I will be covering the PvP aspects of them. So uh, if you came here for PvE, I won't really be covering that a whole lot. I'll just provide my opinion on gear sets, PvP changes, class changes as they uh, as we read them. So, yeah. Uh, let's just dive into it and and knock this baby out as quickly as we possible. Hopefully, as quickly as possible. Hopefully, under an hour. Uh, that's the goal. Well, welcome to Elder Scrolls Online 7.1.0, the Waking Flame DLC game pack, table of contents, two new dungeons, new item sets. First item set: Dread Cellar from the Dread Cellar dungeon, Scorion's Feast. Max Magicka, Magicka Recovery Weapon and Spell Damage. When you deal damage with a fully charged heavy attack, you gain an imbued aura for 10 seconds, granting you and up to three other group members 307 Magicka and Stamina Recovery. This effect can occur once every 20 seconds. If you deal damage with a fully charged heavy attack with an imbued aura active, consume it and gain an overflow aura for 10 seconds, granting you and up to three other group members 307 Weapon and Spell Damage. So the way this is laid out, this, is, this looks like a pretty strong set. Uh, back bar... At least a back bar recovery set, you do a heavy attack and you can switch it to 200 weapon and spell damage or 307 weapon and spell damage for you and group members. Really nice small group set. Like I actually think this is going to be pretty useful. I do a lot of heavy attacking on my back bar, especially on my mag specs, my sword and board mag specs. If I'm getting beat on and I need some resources, I'll, I'll weave heavy attacks in there. And if I had this set on the back bar, I'd obviously just slot that in every 20 seconds. Like every 20 seconds is a pretty easy cooldown to do. So... Yeah, this looks like a great set. This looks like a really nice set. Rush of Agony, medium. Stamina recovery, weapon and spell damage, offensive penetration. When you deal direct damage with a blink, charge, leap, teleport, or pull ability, pull enemies within 10 meters to you. After two seconds, it deals X amount of physical damage. We'll find out what that is on the PTS. It'll scale, obviously. To all enemies within seven meters. This effect can occur once every eight seconds and scales off the higher of your weapon or spell damage. The pull will not apply crowd control immunity to a target. Developers comment, we expect to see a lot of power from this set, yep, <laughs> with its ability to pull enemies without applying crowd control. In early internal playtesting, we experimented both with and without CC immunity application, and with it, the pull from this set felt challenging to engage with as your goal was to keep everyone clumped up for a prolonged period of time for the boom, but you couldn't do it. With no CC immunity application, we hope there is both enough time to get out before you get hit with the big stun like Dawnbreaker of Smiting and the explosion from the set, and enough room to try and deny your opponent to do that. Note that this set's pull will still respect CC immunity and not pull targets who, who are immune to CC. So, I was looking at this and I thought this over uh, a decent amount. Obviously, this needs to be tested so we can see exactly what it's doing. Uh, but this has the potential to be... Depending on how it runs, it has the potential to be game breaking. Like, like I, I don't want to try and use the like exaggerate those, but like blink or streak as an example. If you're using streak, you're already giving the people you streak over CC immunity because you're stunning them and putting them on the ground. So if you stun them, put them on the ground, and then they get the pull, then they have CC immunity. And they can get out of it. But if they're using like stampede as an example, and stampede's AOE dot is so. For those of you guys that don't know, the Stampede AoE dot uh, that, that goes on the ground, it will proc things like Unleash Terror, and it also procs the VMA 2H dot. And so you can use Stampede to get AoE dot damage from those specific sets. I'm under the assumption, and this is without testing it, that this set will work in the same way. So if you use a skill that has an AoE dot like that and it pulls everybody in, it could be very, very nasty. Now, obviously, like, Stampede's not, like, a super big circle, and so it's not pulling in uh, a ton of people in the area, but but still, at the same time, no cool down on it. It, it, can, it could potentially be a huge pain in the ass to deal with. Um, in my personal opinion, like, we will have to test it, and I will test it, and we'll, we'll go through that entire thing and figure out if this is as strong as I think it is. And if I'm wrong, I'll just come out and be like, guys... I don't think this is wrong, but this is one of those sets where it's kind of weird to test on PTS because it kind of has to be used in an open world environment and you don't get open world environments on the PTS. And so 
I don't know if I'm going to be able to test this set in its in its entirety in the, the avenue that we're you know able to use it in. But but yeah, it is a strong set. It has the potential to be really really strong depending on how um, how these abilities pull. And since it doesn't give crowd control immunity, it means you can keep doing it. You can, after two, <laughs> you can keep doing it. So yeah, um, very. Both these sets are obviously strong and in need of testing. Crimson Oaths Rive Heavy Armor. Armor, max health, armor. When you use an ability that applies a major or minor buff to yourself or an ally, send out a wave of energy that reduces the armor of nearby enemies within 12 meters by 3541 for 15 seconds. This effect can occur once every 12 seconds and will only occur if an enemy is within range. Wow. So 12 out of 15 seconds, you have greater than Spriggan's level armor pen for everybody in your group as a back bar set. This set's strong. Like, a major or minor buff is pretty easy to get. Like, just your armor buff. If you hit activate volatile armor on yourself, you send out a wave, you reduce all this armor for everybody in your group. It's not a major or minor buff, so it stacks with the major and minor buffs. This is a very, very powerful skill. Sorry, I'm, I'm going to be talking a lot, so I will be taking drink breaks. So if you hear ice ching, like making noise, that's, that's what that is. I, I am human, so I do need water occasionally. Um, yeah, this, this looks like a really good set. I, I am curious to see if skills that proc passives, namely Nightblades, like their Shadow Barrier, is procced off of using abilities, and then they get their major wards that way. Does that work that way? Um, does this work with Daedric Trickery? Like, like, does this stack with Daedric Trickery? So, well, it says use an ability, so never mind. Um, yeah, I, like, it's super easy to get just an armor buff. Like, you just run an armor buff, and you can get this. So, yeah, like, this is a good set. We hope this set will become a core group set. See what we did there? Guys, I'm just gonna say, as the, the resident dad and dad joke expert this is solid like this is the best thing out of the patch note so far so core c-o-r crimson's oath thrive get it core get it okay well <laughs> moving on magma incarnate the monster set magic recovery stamina recovery when you heal yourself or a group member with a single target heal ability, grant the lowest health group member within 28 meters minor courage and minor resolve, increasing their weapon and spell damage by 215 and armor by 2974 for 10 seconds. Daedric energy will then bounce to a nearby group member up to three times, applying minor courage and minor resolve for 10 seconds. This effect can occur once every 15 seconds. So once again, a monster set going with the group play situation. So... Apparently this can impact up to three people in your group if you activate a single target heal ability. So like rally, figure, uh, single single target heal abilities, render flesh. Um, I wonder if single target heal over times also work, like mortal, co mortal coil and things like that. But yeah, single target heals, this is, this is pretty powerful. This is just like a, a slight alternative to like blood spawn. So if I remember correctly, Bloodspawn typically has like 66% uptime-ish in fights. If I'm, and I could be wrong. Those of you guys that use Bloodspawn on PC, you can, you can correct me with the exact number. But for 10 out of 15 seconds, similar, similar uptime, I think, to Bloodspawn resistances. But instead of getting ultigen, you get weapon and spell damage to you and your group. Seems like a pretty solid set. Like, I can see a lot of people that enjoy Bloodspawn consider using this, especially if they're in small groups. Like, especially if they're in small groups. The Daedric energy will, energy will always prioritize lower health group members that have not already been hit by Magma Incarnate. Now, I am curious about this, because it does say group member. We all know that uh, AUE healing, or there, there is no healing to specifically to groups. It's to anybody in the area. So does this, will this set have its own set of rules to where it's group members only or will it apply to you know random steve so no offense steve off in the background that snipe spamming with freaking vamp toggle up and he drops below 50 percent health and he gets this buff instead of one of my teammates no offense steve but you gotta quit messing around and taking buffs away from my teammates all right does this set impact steve or is it my friends only like the people that are 
that are in the thick of it. That's that's what I'm curious about. Red Petal Bastion, Thundercolor. Uh, Red Petal Bastion's the dungeon. Thundercolor is the light armor set. Offensive pen, weapon, spell damage, weapon, spell damage. Two, three, and four pieces. Just disgusting. That, that, that's just a good set. Just a good set. Five piece. Dealing damage with a fully charged heavy attack calls a bolt of lightning at your target, dealing shock damage, and leaving a four meter lightning crater at their location for six seconds, dealing shock damage per second to enemies touching the crater. This effect can occur once every 12 seconds and scales off the higher of your weapon or spell damage. Okay, so this is one of the sets that I saw uh, posted from ESO Live or whatever, and I don't know what the damage is yet. I will go on the PTS and we'll, we'll look at the numbers and everything. And it's... You guys know my thoughts on procs. Like most of you guys know my thoughts on proc, like proc damage sets that function like this. It's just too easy, in my opinion, especially when you can stack them. There are a lot of sets that stack with fully charged heavy attacks. And so you just stack a bunch of these and away you go. And it's going to do damage. Vamp toggle plus stamina nightblade plus heavy attack build. Health bars go to zero. Like that's just how this is going to freaking work. And... And yeah, like I like most of these sets, okay? Like this, I, I will say this, I've read through this, these patch notes once already, like halfway through, and then I had to go. The sets are so creative in general. And so I, I don't want this one knock on this one set to be like me hating on all of the patch notes. It's, it's just this one set. Like there's so many different sets that function off of heavy attacks and it's proc damage. Once again, like I'm just stating that this is one of those sets that if it does a decent amount of damage, it's probably going to get immediately adjusted or nerfed into the ground due to complaints a patch later. This is the type of set that, that it comes out with. And I just have to say, as a player that's been playing this game for a while, it's, it's, an, it's annoying to have to deal with sets like this. And as other players that want to farm these strong sets, it's, it's annoying for them to farm them, only to be able to use them for a couple of months. And it's got to be annoying for Zenimax to just come out with new sets and have them just be obsolete within a patch or two. So uh, we will see what the exact damage does, but but the criteria of fully charged heavy attack has been used so much that I just... Yeah, it just doesn't need to be done anymore. It just, like, fully charged heavy attack proc sets, we, we have enough of them. That's all I'm trying to say. Grizzly Gourmet, medium, max stamina, weapon and spell damage, offensive penetration, max stamina... Dealing light attack damage grants you a stack of Baker's Delight for five seconds. When you gain three stacks, you create a sweet roll next to your target for five seconds. If you or an ally touches the sweet roll, both you and your ally gain one of the following effects. You restore 1593 health, magic, and stamina. Gain in power for 10 seconds. Gain major force for 10 seconds. This effect can occur once every two seconds. Okay, so I am curious about this set for a few reasons. Number one, when you gain in power for 10 seconds... Can you get the buff again and does it refresh? Like that, that'd be the question. Or does it stop you from getting that buff? So like hypothetically, I hit my light attack, sweet roll drops, I pick up the sweet roll, I gain in power, okay? In power for 10 seconds. Two seconds later, another sweet roll drops. I still have eight seconds on in power. Do I, if I get in power again, does it refresh or does the set decide you already have in power, you only get major force or the resource return. That, that's what I'm curious about with the set. Does it refresh or, or does it wait for the, the set to end before it gives you another one? Because it's it's super, super, it's already an interesting set because the cooldown's two seconds on these buffs. It's, it's two seconds. Um, and so when I'm looking at this, like the first thing I see with the set, werewolf. Like that is such a, a large amount of resource restore off of light attacks. Gaining in power off your light attacks, major force also. Um, yeah, like that, that's one of the first things I see it on. Obviously like Stamina Nightblade can use it, but they don't really have an issue with sustain. Um, but yeah, there's a reason people use like Ambush and whatnot. It's for the empower buff. And major force is obviously really nice on a Nightblade also. So that would, that's what I'd be curious about because if you get those stacks, like, a, like in the example I provided, so 10 seconds, you get in power. When your next buff comes up, if it's major force, you get 10 seconds of major force. Okay? So then you have 8 seconds of empower, 10 seconds of major force. Then it would be 6 seconds of empower, 8 seconds of major force, and then you get 2 to 3 buffs of resource return before the cooldown ends and you reset them. 
hypothetically, or does it just refresh? Because if it works that way, where you it only works off a of cooldown for these specific buffs, holy crap, guys, like that is so much sustain. It already is a lot of sustain. 1593 of each is no joke. Um, this is gonna build out to be a very nice sustain set. And I know people are gonna be like, oh, it's a sustain set, you don't need it, you don't need it. It's true. But man, if you're getting this much, like this kind of damage on top of it as a five piece with sustain, like this is, this is a pretty loaded five piece is all I'm trying to say. Like the damage, like the set is loaded with stats. Two through five is all stats. And then you get this, like that's a lot, that's a lot. Silver Rose Vigil, heavy, max stamina, health stamina, blocking attack grants you a stack of Realm Shaper for 15 seconds, gaining up to one stack every 0.5 seconds. When you reach three stacks, you consume them and launch necrotic energy at your attacker, dealing X amount of magic damage and applying major maim for 12 seconds, reducing their damage done by 10%. 10%, not percents. Once you fire the necrotic energy, you cannot gain additional stacks of Realm Shaper for 12 seconds. Damage scales off max health. This is an interesting set. It's gonna depend on what the damage amount is. Major Maim is never never a bad thing. Damage mitigation is never a bad thing. We'll have to test that one. Prior Etheric, uh, monster set. Weapon and spell damage for the one piece, two piece. Dealing direct damage with an area of effect ability creates a six meter shadowy whirlwind below your enemy for seven seconds. Enemies within the whirlwind take physical damage each, sec each second, increase their damage taken from your area of effect abilities by 5%. This effect can occur once every 15 seconds. Okay. So a, a few questions about this one. Does the shadowy whirlwind follow your enemy or does it drop at a spot and then when they move, they can move out of it? Be curious about that one. The amount of damage, obviously. Area of effect abilities by 5%. So dual wield, spin to win builds. Uh, Templars, obviously, biting jabs. Uh, is AoE, so having 5% on a monster set could be potentially intriguing um, for 15 seconds. 50%-ish uptime. Okay, depends on the amount of damage, obviously. Like, we'll just have to see. Once again, another set that's interesting. Like, like all these sets are interesting. There, There's not a single one of these where I'm looking at it, like, like in the current patch, where I'm like, nope, that set's not worth running. Don't worry about it. All these sets are interesting, uh, and they'll just have to be tested. <laughs> so, so yeah. Uh, in general, well done, well done, Zoss. Like really well done with the sets, making some very interesting things. Um, PvP campaign changes for update thirty one. The existing no CP Cyrodiil and Imperial City campaigns will now also prohibit proc sets from firing. We have expanded the number of sets from the original grouping that worked during the initial test several months ago. As a refresher, the following sets were not okay. So you guys know the sets. You guys know the sets that were working for no proc. Like the, here they are. I'm not going to read through them. So I'm going to save my voice. Uh, the following sets will function with these campaign rules during this week's patch news and when update 31 launches. So here's all the the sets that are going to work during the PTS. Don't really need to. You guys can feel free to feel free to pause and scroll through them. In the coming weeks, the following sets will be added and will be included with the Update 31 launch. So for No Proc Cyrodiil and Imperial City, these are the sets that you can use. The, the original ones from two patches ago and these. Ethereal Ascension, Akaviri Dragonguard, Ar Archer's Mind, Seducer, Assassin's Guile, Barada's Curse, Bastion of the Heartland, Black Rose, Potentates, Blood Drinker, Buffer of the Swift, Caustic Arrow, which is the Master's Bow, Crushing Wall, VMA, Destro, Dagon's Dominion, Deadly Strike, Dune Ripper Scales, Eagle Eye, Elfbane, Izamara, Flanking Strategist, Frostbite, Hawk's Eye, Innate Axiom, Jorvold's Guidance, Kvach Gladiator, Lecky's Focus, Light Speaker, Mark of the Pariah, Marksman's Crest, Netch's Touch, Organum Scales, Perfected vma and master's weapons permafrost ranger's gate red eagle's fury robes of destruction mastery salvation sergeant's mail shapeshifters chain shield breaker shield of the valiant silks of the sun spider cultist cowl strength of the automaton swamp raider sword dancer sword singer savara scales the four piece torx pack trial by fire war maiden witch knight wrath of the imperium and yasgrimir's birthright Additionally, we will be disabling Volendrung in the no CP, no proc campaign. So uh, 
my my little spiel with this honestly i was never asking for a no proc campaign i just prefer the sets to be balanced honestly a lot of the the procs are balanced right now pre this pts they're not really bad um as long as they're like that i'm i'm fine with it i, I really am having more sets is more fun so although it's cool that they went through with something like this in my opinion they didn't have to like the, the sets just need to be balanced and i get it i i get it like they they're their standard operating procedure and I re the reason i think they may have done this is their uh how they operate with balancing sets sometimes takes a lot of time and so they're probably giving people an out like hey we're, if we introduce something game breaking you can go here in pvp if you don't want to deal with it you can go here and you can get away from it so yeah it makes sense to me from that point of view um but yeah the bigger thing here is disabling volundrung in the no cp no proc campaign this is a huge change now i want to be clear with this also i really loved the idea of volundrung like it was labeled as the counter to emperor and and yeah like it's it's fun like everybody wants to have volundrung there's a reason the entire map swarms to Volendrung is because everybody wants to pick it up and they want to swirl in a circle and kill a ton of people. Like, everybody wants their Sakaar moment where they literally kill, like, 50 people. Like, <laughs> I, I, yeah. Like, everybody wants that. I totally get it. Uh, but the problem is, is when Volendrung drops, everybody goes to Volendrung, and the map gets super, super laggy because everybody's in the exact same spot. And so Volendrung, for that reason, has created more issues than it's helped. Also... It's not really a counter to Emp because Emperor faction can still pick up Volendrung. And so now what happens is if Emperor runs across Volendrung and they kill it and they get it, you now have an entire faction stack of an entire alliance running with Emperor and running with Volendrung and knocking down keeps really, really quickly. And I've seen maps die in a matter of 10 to 15 minutes once the hammer's out because people know that there's nothing they can do against those groups. Yeah, sure, you can bomb them. There's friggin' 60 of them. You're not going to bomb all of them. There's no way you're going to bomb all of them and they're going to be off cooldown from their camp that they're going to set up. And like, it's just, it's just not a fight that you can win. And so people stop playing. And so I think this is a good change. Honestly, I would like to see this happen to all of the campaigns personally. And I, I really like Volendrung guys. I really do. And it, it, it honestly sucks for me to say this, but it's better for Cyrodiil PVP if Volendrung doesn't exist. So, in my opinion, goodbye, old friend. You were fun when I had you. We, we had good times together, killing lots of people. Uh, but yeah, we're, we're just not good for each other. So we just gotta, we just gotta move on. <laughs> All right, rewards for the worthy. Sorry, sorry, I just had my mini moment there. Uh, we've added three new item sets to be acquired through rewards for the worthy, excellent. Dark Convergence, Max Magicka, Offensive Penetration, Weapon and Spell Damage, 2, 3, and 4 pieces, great. Um, oh yeah, okay, let me read through this for you guys. Casting abilities that leave an effect on the ground will create an area that applies a 30% snare and pulls enemies every 2 seconds after a 0.5 second delay and stuns them for 1 second. After 4 seconds, the area deals magic damage to all enemies in the area and additional magic damage to enemies within 3 meters of the center, increasing the damage by 10% for each target. This effect can occur once every 20 seconds and scales off the higher of your weapon or spell damage. This set was designed with one goal in mind, kill large groups. Pesky Zerg sitting on your keep or resource flag send them to avoid by pairing this set with some hard CC and immobilizes. So... I'm glad they did the developer comment because it makes sense from that point of view. I just want to provide my counter, but do you guys, for those of you guys that played back a couple years ago in Scalebreaker, Scalebreaker was the dot meta. Everybody was on a Templar because the dots were hitting so hard and everybody wanted a purge. Like you need purge was the best way to survive back then. Well, your Purify, Templar Purify back then, one of the passives had a snare attached to it. I want to say it was a 30% snare. I, I want to say it was 30%. I could be wrong. But you know how big Purify is, the Purify circle. That entire circle was a snare. And so anytime in that patch when you got into a fight, 
everybody was a Templar. Everybody you fought was a Templar. Everybody was snaring you to shit to where you couldn't move. And so they took that passive off two years ago, and now they're reattaching it to a set. And now they're making it worse. Because every two seconds, you're going to get pulled. Every two seconds, you're going to get pulled. And... Yeah, I mean, hopefully this gives you CC immunity and you can break and you can get out. Like, if you break it, you can get out uh, of the area. But this is going to be one of the most annoying sets to fight in the game. Like, this is going to be one of the most annoying. And it's not really going to be close. Because this set... A snare and a pull and a stun all in the same set. And, and yeah, it also does proc damage. Like, out of all the sets, this is the one I... I dislike the most uh because i don't I, i'm just not a fan of snares and i understand like the thought is we want to help you take out large groups and this will definitely help with that you pull a bunch of people into the same area and it increases the damage by 10 percent for each target hit you could have some fun damage amounts i totally i totally understand that point of view however the snare and the pull impacts everybody this isn't going to just be a large group thing like people aren't going to be able to move in large, large group situations. And so maybe the boots make a return at that point. Like may, maybe, like if this set gets as popular as I think it may, I may just go, I just may just, I may just go snow treaders just so I can move because this set is going to be so annoying. It's going to be so, so annoying to deal with after not having a 30% snare for two years like this. Having it again is going to be it can be very, very frustrating. This set's ridiculous. Plague Break. Offensive penetration, weapon and spell damage, weapon and spell damage. Once again, two through four pieces. Nutty. Like, that's just so much damage. Dealing direct damage to an enemy turns them into a plague carrier for 10 seconds. So, like, we got some real-life zombie shit. So you deal direct damage to somebody, they're a plague carrier for 10 seconds. Dealing disease damage over the duration. X amount of disease damage. <laughs> If the plague is removed early, it explodes, infecting enemies within 8 meters of the carrier dealing disease damage. The explosion deals an additional 10% per enemy hit. This effect can occur once every 10 seconds and scales off the higher of your weapon or spell damage. This set is fucking crazy. <laughs> I don't know what the damage is yet, but, but I want to explain this point of view well let's read the developer comment and then i'll explain my point of view similar to dark convergence we targeted large groups again with this set focusing on their ability to have numerous purges running making locking them down and bleeding them out incredibly difficult to do now larger groups must purge more carefully running the risk of setting off ticking time bombs and having to heal up the aftermath instead of repeatedly casting it with reckless abandon this set depending on the damage and the scaling well it's 10 percent per enemy hit this set could be like huge for small groups versus very large groups because yeah um <laughs> okay so so else story time there are some classes that it's really tough to fight a group of people when it's like 1v6 1v7 1v8 and i'm not talking about because it's that many of them i'm talking about because your kit just doesn't allow you to do the damage that you need to do to kill those kinds of people and i'm talking namely about like mag dk uh, Mag DK has traditionally a lot of specs over the years, had, and I'm not saying that's the way it is now, Like, but over the years, they've been the dot you up, wear you down spec, and then when you get to like half health or so, they, they hit you with the leap whip combination with the dots, and you just, you, they just wear you down. If you fight a couple of Templars as a Mag DK, it's really, really tough to deal with that because of all the purifies. The purify heal over times on the ground. Even if they don't purge off your dots, they just kind of heal through the dots that you apply to all of their allies in the area. And it's a huge pain in the ass. Like you just oftentimes when you're when you're building tanky enough for one VX on a mag DK, you can't not this patch, but in previous patches, you just couldn't build enough damage. And so it, it just would be a fight that like if you played well, you played to a draw because you just weren't killing the group because they were too tanky. We've all had those fights where groups are too tanky. This set eliminates that potential because when you deal direct damage and you dot up that Templar, if they purge it, they're blowing up everybody in their area. Like everybody's taking X amount of poison disease damage that's scaling per person. Now that Templar can't heal up every single person individually. 
leaving open opportunities to kill people. Like this set, this set's nuts. Like this set is a very cool idea. I'm curious as to see how powerful it is. This could be this could be very, very strong and possibly overtuned also. Like this, this very well could be. But this is, once again, Zenimax with very unique set ideas. And you see this, even though I disagree with Dark Convergence, like I disagree with it, the goal is to kill large groups. This set will help kill large groups. So they're right, it does help with that. I, I'm not a huge fan of it, but that's just me. Maybe you guys like it. Let me know, let me know what you guys think. This set, also killing large groups. Rothgar's Chill. Max health, armor, offensive penetration, stunning or immobilizing your enemy, cause them to burst with frost magic, applying the chilled status effect and dealing 26% of their total physical and spell resistance as frost damage to themselves and enemies within eight meters of them, this effect can occur once every seven seconds. This set could also be crazy. Um, chilled status effect. On top of that, 26% of their total physical or spell resistance. So hypothetically, if you have 30k physical and spell resistance, one fourth of 30k is roughly like 7500 so 7500 spell and 7500 physical resistance so you're telling me if somebody has 30,000 resistances you get a 15k tooltip proc if you immobilize your enemy if you stun or immobilize an enemy every seven seconds you have a 15k tooltip set versus somebody with 30k resistances most people have 30k most people do and if they don't have 30k like it doesn't matter like you can you can kill them but but most people are running prior in like the 30 to 40k range so you're we're talking 15 to 20k tooltip that's nuts that that is a nuts nutty nutty set um we'll have to see exactly how it works how effective it is of course but, but yeah once again another interesting set multi-threaded rendering Multi-threaded rendering is an optional performance optimization available in the video settings panel. This option enables a separate thread for the render process, which can improve performance and provide a smoother overall experience if the limiting factor on your device is CPU processing rather than GPU processing. The setting change is only applied after a client restart. This is actually my problem. My, my, my computer is old. It, this might actually help me quite a bit. Please note if you have this option enabled, you may hear your PC graphics card working hard during loading screens. This is expected with the frame rate now being uncapped during loading. This feature is in beta, so if you experience any negative effects, please disable it. All right. Interaction priority changes. We've added new rules for determining which things you'll interact with when there's a potential conflict. Generally speaking, interactable ob objects that are valuable, such as resource nodes and lootable corpses, will have priority over things that are mobile or player made, such as companions and mementos. You should also have less of a problem attempting to interact with doors, die stations, and other permanently available interactable objects, even when they're surrounded by Jubilee cakes or sorcerer pets. We'll be looking for feedback on this new priority set and how it feels through the PTS cycle, so be sure to let us know how the interaction rules are working for you. Okay. New mail reply. You can re reply to people when you receive mail. New collectibles, uh, costumes, emotes, adornments, new homes, new furnishings. I am not a housing game main, like end game guy. Uh, I'm more of a PvP noob, so you guys will have to go somewhere else for that information. Combat and gameplay. This is all about companions, uh, dungeons and group content, exploration and itemization, quests and zones, quests and zones exploration itemization crafting economy combat and abilities drastically improve the back-end scripting of taunt to be more responsive and follow its intended rules better this should fix multiple issues where taunts would sometimes lose target contacts exhibit issues when cast from a range and had ra race conditions where some parts of the hidden behavior such as a taunt immunity would still apply to a target even if you failed to taunt them okay Updated break free to follow a more consistent cost rule when comparing to other abilities. This will reduce situations where it could desync your stamina bar when using, as well as improving the response time and validating if you have enough resources to cast it. Okay, good to know. Uh, many bonuses that reduce its cost have also been changed to be handled naturally by the server rather than as an ability to speed up the validation in cases where you're using many of them. Thank you. Break free. Anybody that plays PvP knows that break free has been really, really bad. It's been really annoying. It's not fun to die in this game. Like, it's never fun to die in the game, but dying in the game when it's your fault because you jumped into a 20 man, because you thought you could 1v15, because somebody played better than you, that's one thing. 
when the game doesn't work, it's it's immensely frustrating and that's been break free. Like break free has just been that way. I've seen it happen to me. I've seen it happen to my opponents. It sucks. It just sucks. Increase the damage taken reduction from the battle spare passive to 55% up from 44%. After the recent adjustments to base character stats, champion points, and they already said they were doing this, but I'll read through it again. Item scaling, we've seen a significant shift in the meta in ways that we've wanted in many cases. In other areas, primarily burst damage and overall time to kill, we've seen a pretty radical shift to something that's dangerously low. In efforts to expand the window of time to kill, we're upping the effect of base player damage reduction from 50% to 60%. Remember that players naturally take 10% less damage now, which is why Battle Spirit was re reduced to 44% to preserve the original 50%, to make up for the added stats all characters have, especially in no CP environments. So long story short, people are getting tankier, like noticeably tankier. Going from 44% to 55% is a massive, massive change. It's not an 11% change. It is 25% plus. Like it is a huge change. Uh, I already saw some of the damage numbers. Probably a little too high right now. It probably needs to come down just a little bit, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, expected it to happen. <laughs> gankers have been going crazy. Uh, people in PvP don't like gankers. That's not me, but yeah, when the masses get killed and they can't react, they get upset, and we get big reactions like this. So yeah, this was pretty, pretty predicted. Uh, the following passives and player abilities now grant hybrid stats to help improve their viability and accessibility to off-meta builds because we love them too. They've been doing a lot of things for hybrids. Talked about, a little bit about this on Friday. Agility now grants equal weapon and spell damage. That's interesting. Uh, what about... Does Willpower do that? Balanced Warrior now grants armor instead of spell resistance. Now grants equal weapon and spell damage. Brutal Carnage bonus now grants equal weapon and spell damage. Concentration, offensive penetration. I think that's the Destro passive. Dexterity now increases critical damage and healing done per piece worn up to 2% at the final rank rather than weapon critical. As Prodigy now grants weapon critical as well. Interesting. Lost Dawnbreaker's bonus now grants equal weapon and spell damage values. That's huge. Prodigy now grants equal critical chance. Savage Strength now grants equal weapon and spell damage values. Scaled Armor armor based stat instead of spell resistance slayer now grants equal weapon and spell damage value slayers is the fighter's guild passive fix multiple multiple issues with ability bar timers displaying incorrect durations fix numerous issues with synergies failing to be considered ability casts fix an issue where abilities using new area of effect ability scripting from update 30 such as dragon knight standard and negate magic could hit innocent targets unintentionally funny uh, um adjusted many player abilities no longer attempt to rem okay so this is the big one just pulling us all back in here. Adjusted many player abilities to no longer attempt to remove stealth or invisibility when they should not. This is also expanded to any damage over time effect rather than only single target damage over time effects as we want the removal and denial of stealth and invisibility to be more active rather than passive. This means that the only player abilities that should remove stealth are area of effect direct damage, stuns, fears, immobilizes, as well as reveals. Attacks made with detection potions, active, may still damage a target but will not strip their stealth or invisibility. So this is the interesting aspect because currently in the game, if I'm playing with Blap and we run across the Nightblade and I pop the tech pot and I hit him and I remove him from stealth, Blap can follow up and also hit him because he's now pulled out of stealth. From how I'm reading this, I can see him, I can attack him, but unless Blap uses an AoE direct damage ability, he cannot pull them out of stealth, so he will not see them and he will not be able to attack them. That is a huge change. That is a huge, huge change to how Cloak currently works. Also fix many issues where attacks that were checking in areas regularly to hit singular targets could target stealth or invisible targets, such as Force Pulse or Shrouded Daggers bouncing attacks. Any attack that checks in an area to attack singular targets will no longer attempt to even apply to targets under these effects. Okay, we'll, look, we'll read the developer comment and then I'll talk about my point of view. The main goals of these adjustments were to improve the consistency and reliability of things like Shadow Cloak, while also stamping out more deliberate rules on what should counter the effects. Currently, these effects have a lot of frustrating counters, mainly ones that feel like the attacker is getting for free on attacks they'd be using naturally regardless, such as Pulsing AoE Dots. Okay, so Pulsing AoE Dots is the Black Rose Prison Destro Staff. 
every dot tick would pull a Nightblade out of stealth. Highly amusing to run. Uh, highly, highly amusing to run. Making it relatively easy to deny stealth and invisibility when you know how. While we did spend a lot of time helping these effects feel more reliable, we also buffed many of the more deliberate sources of stealth and invisibility denial to make counteracting them feel better in general and to better reward going out of your way to utilize them. So yeah. So while we're reading this, before you guys all, like there, there's a lot more patch notes here. We're about halfway through. This is a huge change in a positive effect way for Nightblades. Like not having people with detect pots, having them reveal and pull you out of stealth and have an entire group zerg you down is such a huge monumental change in PvP. I can't overstate how big of a deal that is. Like I, I really can't. Uh, there will still be direct damage AOE abilities that will pull you out of stealth. So if a Sork is running in a group and they're running curse, when their curse pops, they're going to pull you out of stealth because it's an AOE direct damage attack. Steel Tornado, or Spin to Win, sorry, stuff like that. That will still happen. But it's not going to work in the same way that it used to. And so, um, but with that being said, it says we also buffed many of the more deliberate sources of stealth and invisibility denial to make counteracting them feel better in general and to better reward going out of your way to utilize them. I was going to do a video about this. I actually made a whole video and I decided against it because I wanted to wait until the patch notes anyways. But long story short... Cloak for the last two years. Now, guys, this is, I, I want to state this because I, I feel like I, I want to have the discussion on track. I don't want people to, to deviate like I am right now. I play every class in the game. I, if you guys go back and you look at my channel, I have gameplay on every single class in the game. I like bouncing back and forth. I typically play, try to play the classes that are weaker so that I can post builds to help you guys out and, you know, promote playing classes that people enjoy. That hasn't been so much the case lately. As you guys know, I've been busy in real life, but I digress. Um, I play everything. My, I like to see stuff balanced because I don't play any specific class. I'm not one of those guys that is a specific class main that wants to see my classic god tier and every other class nuke to the ground. So from my point of view, Shadow Cloak, Shadowy Disguise, is one of the many skills in this game that is broken. And it doesn't work properly, and it hasn't worked properly for a while. And just as I was saying before with CC Break, there's nothing more frustrating than trying to use a skill that should work properly, and it doesn't. Now, obviously, Cloak's not the only one. We can go through all the skills. Biting jabs and puncturing sweeps doesn't work well in lag. Toppling charge is buggy as shit. Leap is buggy as shit. Noxious breath, buggy as shit. I, I totally get it. Blast Bones gets drunk, and they stand there. Like, there's all these skills and abilities that don't work very well, and they're very buggy. Cloak is one of them. And so... Having Cloak work properly is a change that I'd like to see happen. I'd like to see all the other changes happen also, but we can't talk about them because those aren't happening yet so far in these patch notes. But having it work properly and to have these, the, these specific sets, skills and abilities that shouldn't pull you out of stealth, no longer pull you out of stealth, is a good thing. Um, but with that being said... The reveal, like <laughs> one of the big Nightblade counters is that there's all these forms of reveal in the game. Like, oh, you have like the Sentry set and you have Camouflage Hunter and you have Mage Light and you have Detect Pots and you have Revealing Flare and all these sorts of things exist and nobody gets hard countered by more things in the game than Nightblades, which technically is true. But when you think about it, when you get into a tankier meta, a, sentry, a set like Sentry is no longer effective because you need damage in order to kill people. So Sentry is a set that you can't really run because it's a luxury that you cannot afford to have. So people don't run Sentry during tanky metas because they need higher damage sets. So we can eliminate that one. Uh, Revealing Flare, fantastic skill for what it does. Pulls Nightblades out of stealth, does a ton of damage to them when they are stealth. I've been one shot by Revealing Flare. It was three or four years ago, but it still happened. Uh, it's a really good skill. However, class skill changes have been adjusting over the years to a point to where um, there's no extremely loaded skills like there used to be in the past. And so bar space really becomes a hindrance for most classes. And so although revealing flare is good for what it does, think of what you would run as a solo player and think if you would take off any of your skills on your bar and replace it with revealing flare as a solo player or in a two or three man group. 
more often than not on whatever on most classes you don't have the bar space to run revealing flare because bar space is at a premium there's just better skills that work against more people you're not going to allocate one skill on your bar for one sixth of the classes you're going to encounter in pvp that's just not going to happen like you, you, that's not a choice that you make so we've already debunked sets and a skill detect pots fantastic really really nice for mag specs like i always run detect pots i find it amusing when night blades try to use stealth defensively and that's their only way to react defensively and when you pop a detect pot and they don't know what else to do and they just die it makes me laugh it, it really does um because i also play stand blade and it, it cracks me up so um it's really nice however stamina classes do not have detect pots i'm not here to debate stamina versus magicka it's just stating that Stamina detect pots don't exist, and so when you're trying to 1v4, 1v5, 1v6 on a stam spec, and you have a Nightblade just trying to nuke you from stealth, if you just choose to operate, like activate a detect pot that's magic or, or neither, you're choosing to sacrifice a lot of stamina sustain and sta a stamina bur boost that mag specs just don't have to sacrifice. And so having stamina detect pots would really help in that regard. Uh, but detect pots are good for basically half the class in the game. And like overall, they're, they're solid, but stamina detect, detect pots would be amazing. Like they, sh they should just happen. Now, on to the other skills, Mage Light and Camo Hunter. Both skills are great. They're, they're honestly really, really great. I'm not gonna go through all of them, but they're, they're both loaded skills. And they're good because they do a bunch of different things. But they're not individually good, but they're not good because they do one thing really well. They're like a, drac like a jack of all trades skill. And so when you look at Camel Hunter as a reveal, it's got like a six meter radius and it costs 4K stamina. It just doesn't work very well for revealing Knight, but like six meters is nothing. The range of a Dragon Knight's heavy attack is longer than the reveal radius of Camel Hunter, if I remember correctly. And the cost is ridiculous. 4K is so much. And so all those of those, those skills are good. You can't go around hitting revealing fit, like hitting uh, Camel Hunter a whole lot because you're gonna run out of resources just trying to find somebody and you're hoping that they're on top of you. Like they have to be on top of you in order for you to pull them out of stealth with that. Same thing with Inner Light. Inner Light's great. 5% more max magic, more crit damage, and a reveal. Reveal feels a little better, but it, it's functionally the same. But yeah, most of the, t the, te the tech stuff that currently exists in the game isn't that good. Like, detect pots are great. That's it. Detect pots are great for magical classes. They're situationally good for stamina classes. And everything else is basically garbage <laughs> for, from a detection standpoint because you're either not able to equip it or you're just not using it. And so, yeah, the s long story short, the skill should work properly, but detect options should be better. That, that's my rant. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry it took so long, but I had to get all of that out. Uh, fix an issue where guaranteed critical chance and damage for successful sneak attacks could, in some cases, apply to multiple attacks at once. All right. Fix an issue where multiple heals based on damage over time were not considered healing over time, such as blood craze or structured entropy. All right. Dragonite, Magma Armor, Corrosive Armor Morph. Fix the issue where the penetration check on direct damage for this morph was not consistent with other sources. Molten Weapons fixed an issue where you could not cast this ability or its morphs on nearby neutral enemies. Okay. Boneyard, Unnerving Boneyard, fixed an issue where this morph's damage is not considered an area of effect attack. All right. Flame Skull. The bonus damage from this ability and Morph's third cast has now been built into their damage coefficients rather than a bonus modifier effect. This will clean up some calculation errors that result in less damage than intended when stacking multiple bonuses. Okay. Okay. We'll have to try that out. Nightblade Shadow. Shadow Cloak. Fix an issue where this ability and Morph's protection could work even if the attacker had a detection potion active. Cool. That was the other thing. Sometimes the tech pots, you can see them, but you couldn't hit them. The, the game just... Yeah, the tech pots sometimes were very, very frustrating, even when they weren't. Like, even though you could see somebody, you sometimes couldn't attack them. Um, Sorcerer, Storm Calling, Overload. Light attacks from this ultimate and morphs now break stealth when cast. There's nothing sneaky about lobbing giant bolts of lightning at your foes. Good. Uh, Overload has been a... Yeah, it's been used as a gang spec. Templar. Backlash, which is purifying light and power of the light. This ability and its morphs now retain 50% of the damage you dealt to the target, up from 20% to help more reliable in player versus player encounters. 
The final explosion now scales off your spell or weapon damage depending on the morph rather than magic or stamina. The final explosion now also scales with both positive and negative bonuses rather than only negative ones. Ha ha, backlash go boom. Backlash needed a buff. It really did. Uh, it wasn't... <laughs> they, they nerfed the hell out of it the last time they nerfed it. And, and yeah, there was just no need for it. And so we'll, we'll see how strong this is, but a buff to purifying light and power of the light was needed. Uh, we'll see... We'll see how much this is if it needs to be toned back a little bit. Week one of the PTS, but they're pushing power of the light and purifying light in the right, in the right direction. Radiant Destruction. Fix an issue where both morphs of this ability had scaling coefficients with less significant figures than intended, resulting in some very lo minor lost damage. Radiant Oppression. This morph no longer increases the damage done of the ability based on your current magicka, but instead increases the damage scaling of the execute multiplier to 500%. This should retain roughly the overall maximum power of the morph, but with far less micromanagement. Oh crap. That's a bit that's that's a big change. Okay. So back in the day when raiding oppression like used to just nuke people's health bars and you could just cast it at full health, and if somebody dropped to 70% and they were dead, it was really annoying to run across a 10-man group because the Templars knew that it worked that way. And so they would just cast at full health, like they, they would cast at full health, they didn't care. Somebody else in their group was going to do damage and you were, you were going to die, radiant impression, go boom. Uh, just like Backlash now. <laughs> but, but yeah, the big damage came from people at max resources. And so if you're at max resources, it really, really hit hard because you, it scaled off of how much magicka you had left. Uh, Now it's just it's just a higher multiplier. So it's gonna be more effective for everybody all the time. That that's huge. That's huge in a PvP environment. Uh executes are gonna this execute is now substantially better, I think. Warden Green Balance, accelerated growth. This passive now grants major mending for two to four seconds on the proc, up from one and a half to three seconds. Okay, I saw some people talking about this. An extra second of major mending. Okay. I mean, I get it, guys. Warden is one of the strongest classes in the game. It really is. It's one of the best. So major men, like hitting a buff by like major mending for an extra second. I get that's like why, but at the same time, it's like, it's not like it's like six seconds, you know? Eh. Winners embrace Frozen Gate. This ability and its morphs traps now last 15 seconds rather than 30 seconds. Fix an issue where in some cases these abilities could remove themselves before their timer ran out. Okay. Destruction Staff, Ancient Knowledge. This passive now better discerns what is an area of effect attack and what isn't with its bonus damage based on the type of your staff. Increase the bonus of both Inferno and Lightning Staff types to 5-10%, to 10 up from 4-8% to 8 to help better match the power of Twin Blade and Blunt or Heavy Weapons. Good. Thank you. Uh, like, thank you. This is huge. It's only 2%, but that is, that is a nice change. Destructive Touch. This ability and morphs now guarantee the respective element type status effect on hit. Wow. Guaranteed status effect. Increase the cost of 2970 up from 2700 to incorporate the added auxiliary effect. Increase the range to 15 meters from 14 meters for better consistency since the destructive clench was already 15 meters. Okay. Frost touch and reach versions of this building now deal 80% more damage on its initial hit to make them equal to other ranged spammable atta damage attacks to give love to those frost DPS out there. Interesting. 80% more DPS on Clench. Interesting. Destructive Clench Morph, the Frost version of this ability, still remains tank-focused rather than DPS-focused, and as such has received a cost reduction to 1485 down from 2700. All supplies major main for 5 seconds at rank 4. Wow. With the introduction of Frostbite's Frostbite set in Update 30, we saw a lot of discussion on the viability of Frost damage sets and how their main drawback, regardless of their power, was there was no Frost damaging ability that could be used as a spammable attack. Correct. Rather than bloating those sets further, we decided to let Frost Touch and Smorph stand out. Frost Touch and Reach now deal ranged spammable damage on initial hit. Additionally, Frost Clench has been missing the mark for being a viable taunt compared to Puncture or Inner Fire, so we've decided to amp it up by introducing a source of on-demand Major Maim, while also reducing the cost. Changes to the base ability also help to gain a form of on-demand minor, minor Brittle, helping both DPS and tanks out regardless of the morph. Interesting, interesting, interesting. So the reach is more damage. The clench is the tank version. So sorry, I said clench earlier. My bad. My bad. 
Elemental Force, this passive now properly states its effects, all status effect chances, rather than only elemental status effects. Okay. Force Shock, this ability is morphs now can now once again be reflected. Once upon a time, a special rule was made for these abilities to not be, as it interacted poorly with charge-based reflect skills such as yield reflective scales, which have been clipped. Therefore, this behavior is irrelevant and inconsistent. Okay. Interesting. Wall of Elements. Fix an issue where wall of fire and morphs bonus damage against burning targets didn't work past 9 seconds, meaning the final 5 seconds of blockade of fire could not benefit from it. All right. Weakness to Elements. Elemental sus Susceptibility. This morph now persists indefinitely until the target leaves combat or dies, rather than lasting 20 seconds and refreshing whenever they take damage from you. Dual Wield. Flurry. Bloodthirst Morph. This morph now heals for up to 33% of the damage done per hit, rather than up to 63% of the final hit's damage done. This will result in slightly more healing effectiveness and more responsive healing as well. Okay. Lots of changes. Um, Two-thirds of the way through. <laughs> Restoration Staff absorbed this passive now procs on any successful block rather than only against spells, which is already a half-truth as it procced on plenty of non-spells as well. All right. Increase the restore to 300, 600 magic on proc up from 288, 540. This passive now has a 250 millisecond internal cooldown. Essence Drain, increase the duration of Major Mending from this passive 2 to 4 seconds up from 1.5 to 3 seconds. This passive now heals a friendly target within 12 meters of the enemy you hit. You heavy attacked up from 6 meters, increase the healing done to 25 to 50% of the damage done up from 15 to 30%. Fix an issue where the passive could critically strike, despite the initial hit already being able to do that. No double crits allowed at the dinner table. Okie dokie. Grand Healing, Healing Springs remove the visual effects for the magic or restore on this ability to help reduce visual clutter. All right, Panacea is the ultimate life giver morph. Fix an issue where there was a short window of time where all spells could cost nothing after activating this ability. Okay, fix an issue where this morph could fail to be recognized as a restoration staff ability in some rare cases. All right. Two-handed abilities, Onslaught. Fix an issue where the penetration check on direct damage for this morph was not consistent with other sources. All right, Cleave. This ability in the Carved Morph now apply a damage shield on you when cast equal to the scaling coefficients of the initial hit. Note it does not grant a damage shield based on damage done. Okay. Increase the cost by 300. Adjust the area of all versions to hit a 300 degree arc with a 5 meter radius rather than a 140 degree arc with a 7 meter radius. To better line up with attacks, visual appearance, and help make it more clear which attacks should land and which should not. Okay. Brawler, increase the base size of this morph's damage shield by approximately 7%. Carve the bleed from this morph can now stack up to three times. Blood for the blood god. Brawler is currently the clear winner in terms of morph options as it scales more effectively in power per target. This paired with the fact that the melee builds require staying power make the defensive option the clear winner but makes Carve feel weak no matter how high a damage can be adjusted. By adding a baseline shield to these abilities, we hope to see more active choices between the morphs. Will you let the blood flow for you and your enemy or staunchly stand in their faces? Okay, I mean, this isn't used a ton in PvP, but we'll, we'll look at it anyways. Light Armor, the Shield, Harness Magicka fix an issue where you could get more than three Magicka restores from this ability per cast. Soul Magic, um, Soul Locks, not PvP, Soul Summon, Soul Strike, okay. Vampire, Vampiric Drain, this ability and its morphs now heal for 25% of your missing health per tick, up from 23, okay. Morphs also no longer rank up 1.1% per damage and done per rank. Now rank up in morphed effects. Okay. Exhilarating Drain. This morph now ranks up one additional ultimate per rank, which will be five at rank up from four. Okay. Drain Vigor. This morph now grants 1% missing stand per rank, which ends at 10% at rank four up from five. Okay. We're, we're just at the point where it's just a bunch of numbers and it's, it's a little annoying. Fighters Guild. Expert Hunter. This ability in Camouflage Hunter Morph now reveal enemies hidden within 8 meters of you up from 6. Wow. I didn't get this far. But yes, this is a good change. Like, like I just talked about, this is a nice change. All versions of this ability now check for hidden enemies every 500 milliseconds instead of once every second for more responsive catching of those slippery targets. Wow. That's nice. Wow. All versions of this ability now prevent stealth and invisibility for 4 seconds up from 3 seconds. 
The hidden passive from this ability and its morph sense evil now only highlight player werewolves and vampires rather than any undead Daedra or werewolf creature. This change was done to better represent your targets your skilled tracker bonus works against. Evil Hunter, the morph, this morph now also increases the radius of the reveal to 12 meters. Okay, we were just talking about this. These are good changes. These are very, very good changes, in my opinion. Skill Tracker, this passive now increases your damage with Fighter's Guild ability by 10%, and an additional 10% against players with werewolves and vampires rather than increasing your damage down with Fighter's Guild abilities by 20% and against... Okay. Developer's comment. This passive is currently attempting to validate a very long list of specific target checks on the back end to apply its damage bonus. Rather than continuing this, it will not only check three things instead of 23, each time you deal damage while retaining its flavor in PvP environments. All right, Trap Beast, this ability its morphs now lasts for 15 seconds after the delay, let rather than a minute. Mage's Guild, Fire Rune, this ability its morphs traps now lasts for 15 seconds after the delay, rather than 30 seconds. Mage Light, this ability in the Inner Light Morph now reveal hidden enemies within 8 meters of you, up from 6 meters. Once again, good change, as you guys, uh, I agree that it's a good change. All versions of this ability now check for hidden enemies every, same thing. All versions of this ability now prevent stealth and invisibility for 4 seconds, up from 3 seconds. So, positive buffs to reveal Nightblades from stealth, even though Nightblades got adjusted in the other ways. So, yeah, he more incentive to put these solid skills in your bar they will now function better as a reveal very very good psychic order deliberation this passive no longer grants major protection instead applies a unique 30 percent damage mitigation to get this passive's power back to where it was meant to be imbue weapon this morph now applies major breach to the target hit for six seconds rather than healing for 25 percent of the damage caused to help ensure the thing being crushed wasn't your dreams Wow, Crushing Weapon is now applying Major Breach. Very, very interesting. Very interesting. Now potentially able to take, like, Ellie Drain off your bar. Inner Fire. This ability in Morphs. I can't remember if Crushing Weapon is a Stamina or Magic Morph, I'm sorry. I can't remember. I could be wrong about the Ellie Dread thing. <laughs> its abilities and morphs will now only apply their unique visuals if the energy synergy is successful applied to the target. Fix the issue where inner fire and rage were placing an extra negative effect on targets. Inner Beast. Increase this morph's damage taken bonus on the target to 12% at base, up from 2% to better enable the very few bruiser tanks out there that were utilizing the skill. Wow. Damage taken bonus on the target at 12% at base, up from 2%. Holy crap, that is a huge change to Inner Beast. I, I've ran Inner Beast a few times when it was like 4 or 5% damage. 12? Okay. Okay, we'll see if we can fit it. <laughs> we'll see if we can fit it on our bar. Assault, Magic Adept. Reduce the base damage of this ability and its morphs by approximately 60%, but increase the scaling bonus per target to 100% up from 25%. The abilities will now deal less damage than a normal area of effect spammable until it hits three or more targets. All right. Well, I will still be getting solo bombed by three to five Magic Knight Blades, and I expect it. But at the same time, that's, that's a nice change, because, yeah, I mean... Bombers are a good counter to large groups, but when bombers are so good, they also function as a single target gank spec. Uh, that's when you, that's when you know it's probably a little bit too strong for what's intended to do. Like there's nothing, like if you're if you're building a kamikaze, jump into a group, nuke a bunch of people, yeah, makes sense. Um, but yeah, when you're able to kill a lot of people by just, even though it's one, kind of like the AOE versus single target is kind of negated. You know what I mean? So. Makes sense. It makes sense. Revealing Flare. This ability in its morphs now prevents stealth and invisibility for four seconds up from three seconds. This ability in its morphs now passively grant major protection while slotted to ensure they do not feel lackluster to slot when not actively trying to deny stealth or invisibility, similarly to Mage Light or Expert Hunter granting major buffs. Holy crap. Okay, so if you guys sat through my rant, 
I didn't get this far. Like I said, I didn't get this far. But Xanamax clearly uh, figured out that these were the issues uh, with Camo Hunter, with Mage Light, with Revealing Flare. And they did all sorts of things. So like I said, Revealing Flare in and of itself is good at revealing people. But there was nothing, there was no reason to slot it on your bar. Now there is. You get major protection while it's slotted. You get 10% damage mitigation by slotting Revealing Flare. It is now a skill that you can use against everybody instead of just one sixth of the population. Well done, ZeniMax. Like, re really well done in this regard. Making this skill useful for everybody. Very, 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 very well done. Champion system, three new sub constellations. Increases movement speed, 10 points per stage, five stages, so you get to 10% more movement speed. Thrill of the Hunt, whenever you kill an enemy, you gain a major expedition for three seconds. Two stages, 25 points. Refreshing Stride, you gain 100 health magic recovery per stage while sprinting. Interesting. Five stages, so up to 500 health and magic recovery. Okay. Survivor Spite sub-constellation, focused on pushing back and fighting against the odds. Sustained by suffering, increase your health, magic, and stamina recovery by 30 per stage while under the effects of a negative effect. Five stages, 10 points. So five stages, so that's 150 health, magic, and stamina recovery. Okay, Pain's Refuge reduces your damage taken by 1% per negative effect on you up to a maximum of 20%. That is a ridiculous passive. I mean, if you have 20 negative effects on you, you're probably not able to do a whole lot anyways but but yeah relentless gain major protection for three seconds after being stunned or feared relentlessness major protection for three seconds wow 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 Walking Fortress sub-constellation focused on block and damage shields. Bracing Anchor increases block mitigation by 4%. Movement, but lowers your movement speed by 16% at all stages. Ward Master reduces your damage taken by 2% with the damage shield active. Okay, Soothing Shield. When you successfully block an attack, you have a 15% chance to restore 147 health per stage, 5 stages. So what is that? 700? 700 health? Eh. I mean, maybe in PvE, but that's not really a PvP thing. Ironclad renamed this passive to Fortify to prevent confusion for legacy players, as the original Ironclad has made its return in Warfare. Okay. Getting to the end here, guys. Warfare. Ironclad. This champion star makes its return as a slottable star, reducing damage taken from direct damage attacks by 2% per stage, 5 stages, 10 points per stage. So 10% damage mitigation on direct attacks by slotting Ironclad. Updated several item sets to be more performant on the server. The following item sets can now be used in campaigns that do not allow item set procs. Okay, they, they already went through these. I'm not going to go through them again. Fix an issue where perfected item set pieces were not showing active bonuses correctly. Ability altering weapons, frenzied momentum. Fix multiple issues where the set would fail to generate stacks when casting some stamina abilities. Okay. Prismatic weapon. This enchantment now deals damage equal to a normal absorb enchantment and restores health, magic, and stamina equal to half the potency of a singular resource rather than dealing bonus damage to undead and daedra similar to skilled hunter this enchantment is too narrow in its use case requiring it to check too many cases where it should and should not work rather than continuing that this enchantment will now fit the proper theme of prismatic enchants where it offers all three of the primary resource in one at half the efficiency of a singular okay palinal's aptitude more hybrids i christopher has to be excited right guys well let's see let's see if he is Rename this set to Pelinal's Wrath. The set now grants you a damage shield based on your weapon or spell damage. And a stack of Wrath of White Strike for 10 seconds whenever you kill an enemy. Wrath of White Strike grants you up to 100 weapon and spell damage per stack, but causes you to take 1% of your max health as Oblivion damage every second per stack up to 10 stacks max. What? Okay. This set's 2 through 4 for these bonuses are now weapon and spell damage, offensive penetration, and weapon and spell damage rather... Okay, this is, this is a great change. 
So for hybrids, the issue with Palinals was you were just double dipping on another stat set. Now this set is allowing you to run both magic and stamina specs because you have offensive pen and weapon and spell damage. Set no longer causes your weapon and spell damage to become the highest of the two values. Okay. This is an interesting set. One our weapon damage stack per stack but cause you to take 1% of your max health as oblivion damage every second per stack. So you could have up to 1,000 weapon and spell damage every time you kill some something. So every time you kill something, you can have up to 1,000 weapon and spell damage. But while you have up to 1,000 weapon and spell damage, you can take 10% of your max health as oblivion damage. So if you have 30k health, <laughs> we're like, what? Okay, so if you have 30k health, that's 3k damage, oblivion damage per second. Okay, this is a super interesting set, but I, it doesn't seem viable. Like, it just doesn't seem viable. Which is too bad. It's too bad. Like, I, I was pretty excited for this. Uh, but max health is oblivion damage. That, that means whatever your max health is, you up to 10% of it's guaranteed. Like, then there's no mitigation for oblivion damage. So, yeah. It's interesting. It's definitely interesting. Um, we'll have to test that, of course, but I think some adjustments need to be, need to be made to make it viable. That's too bad. Uh, Dungeon Arena, Aurora's Thunder. The set now is properly labeled as damage over time in a proc. Azure Blight's Reaper fixed an issue where the set was not obeying its cooldown and recently affected targets. <laughs> Crusader. The set now grants you a damage shield based on your weapon and spell damage for 6 seconds and creates an area of effect beneath you for 10 seconds whenever you deal direct damage with a blink, charge, leap, or teleport or pull ability. Every 2 seconds, the area grants you and group members inside minor courage for 12 seconds. Wow. Effects incur once every 20 seconds. Okay. It sets two through four piece bonuses are now weapon and spell damage rather than max stamina, stamina recovery, and max stamina. Two through four weapon and spell damage. Interesting. Set no longer increases your dodge chance bonus or roll dodge by 0.3 seconds. Okay. Pestle and host, the set that can now stack between multiple wares. Large groups beware. Yep. Pillar of Nern, the initial hit from the set can now be properly blocked. Okay. Good to know. Sunder Flame is set now as a 2.1 second cooldown to prevent situations where repeated heavy attacks prevented it from dealing any damage. All right. Unleash Terror is set now properly labeled as a proc and has a two second delay before it deals damage. Total damage and duration remain the same. Viper Sting is set now has a one second delay and ticks four times instead of five times. The total damage over the duration remains the same. Okay. So a little bit more burst with Viper. Interesting. Almost done. Monster Masks. Gjolnir, fix an issue where you can still generate stacks for a short window against targets who were recently affected by the set. All right, Krogs, the set attack hitbox now better matches its visual effects and adjusts its visual frequency to match its actual frequency. Overall, this will slightly decrease the width of the attack, but increase the length. Increase the length. I like what you did there, Xenomax. Selene, update the set to no longer spawn a real spirit bear pet and now summons a visual bear to maul your foes. This should significantly improve its performance without changing its behavior too drastically, rather than fixing multiple issues where it could synergize with sets such as Necropotence. Celestrix, the set now is properly labeled as a proc. Storm Fist, Storm Matronach Fist from the set can now properly be dispelled as it is pretty darn magical when you think about it. Okay. Belladreth, the set's disgusting spores no longer, longer explode after hitting a target and instead now continue to travel in a straight line. Okay. Fixed a few edge cases where the set could fail to work with multiple users. All right. Mythic items. Pearls of Elnofi. Fixed an issue where the set was incorrectly procking off damage abilities that healed you when they dealt damage. The set was balanced around frequently having to cast healing abilities, and this occurrence worked around this requirement, causing it to be significantly stronger than intended in some cases. Okay. Overland Nicholas. So now grants a stack of Nicholas resolve every five seconds when you successfully block, which after eight seconds stacks, you consume them and completely avoid the next direct damage attack made against you within five seconds. The set no longer has a 25% chance on blocking spell projectiles to reflect them back to the attacker. All right. Sithis. The set now grants 5% movement speed for 30 seconds whenever you kill an enemy, up to 20 times. It grants invisibility for three seconds when activating. Wow. Interesting. Sets two through four piece bonuses are stamina, magicka, weapon, and spell damage, rather than 
max health, max health, crit chance. Okay. So it no longer grants Major Berserk whenever you kill an enemy with Blade of Woe. Womp womp. The set now grants hybrid stats rather than exclusively, exclusively magicka based stats. Uh oh. It's 4B's bonus now is offensive penetration rather than max magicka. The 5 piece bonus now requires you to be in combat to proc. Know that this will still work with successful sneak attacks. Okay, Stygian. Duly noted. We'll have to check out Stygian. Savara scales, the initial hit from the set can now be properly blocked. Twin Sisters fixed an issue where the damage over time from this ability could be dodged and blocked in some cases. PvP source sets. Galarian's Revenge is set now with properly labeled as a proc. Meritorious Service and Powerful Assault fixed an issue where these sets not properly follow their intended sorting behavior with how they apply targets. They will now prioritize nearby players to the wear. Okay, Vice Cannon, the damage over time from the set can now stack for multiple users. Ooh. Yikes. Trial sets. Just quickly scrolling through, see if any of these work for PvP. Guards. Fix an issue where the unstable core ability could refresh itself even if you were immune to crowd control and made the immunity granted from breaking it more reliable. Thank you. Guards are OP. Telekinetic prison ability is no longer 6 to 4 second disorient, depending on their cast time, and is instead an outright 4 second stun, making it less prone to issues when paired with other crowd control abilities. Senate Chain's ability now operates more closely to players' versions and will no longer apply two sources of crowd control immunity, previously creating situations where you could more likely become stuck in a crowd control. Yes. Fix an issue where damage extended chains was mitigated by physical resistance instead of spell resistance. Okay. Fix an issue where a crystal shard casted by guards was granted two forms of CC immunity. All right. Crafting economy, events and celebrations, new life festival, witches festival, housing... Housing Editor, Quests and Zones, Alakir Desert, Bankrat. We're getting to the bottom. We're almost there. Different areas, UI, the end. Okay, so that's the end of the patch notes. Um, let me know if you guys have any questions. I know that was quite a bit. Overall, I thought there was really good changes. We'll have to look at some sets. Obviously, I will do some patch note reviews when I have some time. We'll go through different sets. I, I'm impressed. Uh, honestly, from, from a gaming perspective, this patch is a lot better than the one that we're currently in. There's a lot more interesting things in this patch than what we're currently in. And so I'm excited for that reason. Um, just going to say that performance still needs to be addressed. They, they haven't talked about performance in a very long time. Uh, it's only getting worse. And yeah, I, I am not a developer. I'm not. But no proc Cyrodiil worked a heck of a lot le better than this current patch. Worked a heck of a lot better. And I wasn't, I'm not saying it was great. I'm just saying it worked better. And so I don't know what's happening, but there's, there's kind of a backwards direction in performance right now. And, and uh, yeah, got to figure this out. Got to figure this out because more and more people are leaving. But overall, the patch notes for what they are are good. And I think they're pretty good. So we'll look at the sets. We'll compare them. Um, a lot of good things in here. Let me know what you guys think. Thank you for watching, guys. Have a nice day.